Hey, welcome back to the channel. It is time for another 1,000 word short story inspired by a piece of artwork. Are you ready for this one? Well, this one is uh, different. It's a character sketch. I've done something similar in the past, but uh, let us wait until we get to the artwork before I discuss anything more. I will give you a hint though. It is in the genre of sci-fi, cyberpunk, if you will. So I had to find a fitting soundtrack for this tale. The one I chose was titled At the Borders of Orion and is by an artist called Kalios. Kind of in the dungeon synth uh, genre, but uh, a little more sci-fi, and I'm sure you will find it appropriate. So cue up the synth, and let's check out this week's artwork. This week's artwork is titled simply Jake, and it's by an artist known as Deep Fry, who is working out of Seoul, South Korea. I did a character sketch a long time ago based on simply a portrait, and this one struck me from scrolling through the feed on ArtStation. There's a lot of character to it, a lot of details to it, and I thought, why the hell not? This would be an, another good excuse for me to try a character sketch, try to try to create a story with absolutely no conflict, no setting whatsoever, with the exception of the setting that is alluded to by the garb of this character. So let's take a closer look. Well, we have a, a guy with a mustache, slick back hair. He's, he's kind of pale. He's pointing his two fingers at us, almost as if he's like a, a cyberpunk Fonz or something. But he has a, uh, a mechanics-looking jacket with a patch that reads Jake on it. He also has a cybernetic arm, for one of his arms anyway. And he's carrying some kind of case. I'm guessing there's a weapon in there, most likely. But there's a lot of interesting details on the case. Some crosses, uh, some tape that says fragile. Uh, looks like suspenders hanging there, uh, maybe holding it closed to a degree. A uh, sticker with his name on it, also one that says dopeness. But that's essentially what we have here, what I have to, to create a story. So these ones can be more difficult, obviously. I'm sure you can understand that than ones that are a complete scene. But um, I am up for the challenge. So Deep Fry, thank you for the inspiring artwork. I also suggest you check out his profile in depth because it's full of interesting characters like this man named Jake. So that said, let's see what I came up with. Jake combed his hair back with his head still on the pillow. He smoothed his mustache without looking in the mirror, despite the one mounted to his ceiling right above his head. It was more habit than anything else, a nervous tick, some might say, but Jake was never nervous. Jake flinched to the sound of tapping and rustling outside his window, nothing but the black of night between the blinds. The servos and his mechanical arm whirred, a wake-up call Jake never needed, but old habits and all. A dark history stemming from his youth to get up in time for school all the way to the near present when he had been an on-call pizza delivery driver, which is how it all started. Hydroplaned, they'd said. It rained like hell that night, they'd said. Rolled the truck and his arm had punched through the glass to be pinned once it settled on its side, they'd said. But he'd been the one in the damn truck and those brain pan had been abused over the years the biological wiring most people had replaced with synthetic still trundled along more or less just how nature had intended. No matter how quick tech evolved, he'd put his money on millions of years of evolution every time. His arm whirred again, but now I have to bet on you. He flexed his fingers, it because it wasn't technically his, still had a few jobs left to do to clear the debt. He slung himself out of bed, grabbing his jacket that looked like it belonged to a mechanic, and read, Jake, on the breast patch. Because what the fuck else would it say? He slipped it on, tucking the shorter sleeve behind the piston, because the damn cybernetic arm was too bulky with all kinds of form over function bullshit fanning from the forearm and elbow. They'd assured him those things had their uses, but he wouldn't have full access until the debt was paid. The only thing left to don were his shoes because Jake always slept in his clothes. He learned the hard way when the junkhead in his old apartment building torched the place, in three minutes flat from a psycho stem cook gone wrong. Jake had ended up on the street, with nothing to hold onto except his fun bits, not to offend the crowd gathering to watch the fire. Jake stood in the entryway of his apartment, which was really just the two square feet in front of the door, and pressed the wall with his shoulder, which opened a small panel to eject his gear, all cased, all good. The cybernetic arm took it. Jake wasn't a weak man, but he liked the weight of his debt to be a metaphor tied to the thing that had yet to become his. The mirror on the door showed him a man who looked damn good, and the case that could have housed a violin or an assault rifle or a nuclear bomb. 
because they were small these days. Near the back of the outfacing side, three white crosses were stickered with a scratched in one beneath. He wasn't a religious man. Hell, no one was anymore. So they were essentially meaningless, but he liked the way they looked. Down further near the orange strap below the handle stretched a torn length of silver tape that read fragile. But he wasn't about to reveal what lay inside. Though if it was housed in a case like this, how couldn't it be fragile? Unless it was a ruse, but Jake never lied. Farther down was a blue dot sticker some little girl slapped on there while he waited for job instructions in the food district. She told him he looked blue at the time. Maybe he had been. Flanking that dot was a shred of white tape with Jake scrawled in black on it. Because that was his name. And he never lied or was afraid of people knowing his name. Because he was the embodiment of dopeness, which was the final sticker of interest on his case. And that didn't need an explanation. And that didn't need an explanation. Jake listened at the door, because they were always looking for him. Light foot traffic, then gone. A deathbed cough, then chatter, then gone. After a trek through the corridor and stairwell maze, Jake was on the street, struck by a puddle on the evening asphalt still simmering from the day. It showed him the neon tangle of buildings above. The image felt off. The patterns weren't right. He didn't risk a look up. They couldn't know he knew. He swore he heard the flex of bulletproof fabric. Jacket sleeves adjusting the rifle trained on him. He stepped onto the street and someone yelled, Watch out! Jake watched as a white hot streak seared the sky. It hit his abdomen and down he went. His case lay open to the sky. Almost had his gear out. Almost. He felt no pain. Must be his adrenals firing. Feet shuffled behind him and his cybernetic arm lashed out. In his grip and in his sideways view of the street stood an old woman with rainbow filament hair. It cycled through ten colors before he let go of her. She smoothed her purple synth fur trench coat and her glowing hair. No harm done, young man. That one got you good. He followed her pointing finger to his boot. A spatter of white dashed the leather. Bird shit. Used to feed them from my window back when I was a girl, she said, the memory caught in her eyes. Drone pigeons didn't shit. Old world pigeons did. Nearly extinct. Extremely expensive. And it was assuredly flying back to report coordinates. The old woman's eyes glittered. It's crossing six and fourth. Jake, before you kill it, Will you give it this? She held out a square of cracker. Jake made his fingers into a gun and pointed it at her. You got it, lady. Welcome to the end reviewer. I am so glad you made it. This is where I talk about my final thoughts, what I like, what I didn't like, maybe what I learned. Because you've listened to it or read the story by now, I'm sure you can uh, understand the disappointment I have with this tale. So there's some things I like, definitely. There's some things that I didn't like, and there's some things that I would... Love to go back and fix, perhaps. Let us begin at the top. We have this guy named Jake. I knew I had to kind of make him a smart ass, a little bit too cool for school, but uh, so I had him uh, combing his hair immediately while he's still in bed. Not only that, but he has a um, he has a, a mirror above his bed, but he doesn't look at it when he's smoothing his his mustache down. And so we learn a lot of other strange characteristics of this guy. Um, and there's one technique I wish I would have utilized a couple more times. Well, at least one more time. And that is this moment right here where he's um, talking about a nervous tick and I segue into, but Jake was never nervous. And then immediately he flinches because he hears something outside his window. And that is the, uh, the foreshadowing of the pigeon that, that poops on him because uh, that is where I got that story from. If you look closely, I, I don't think I mentioned it when I talked about the artwork, but there's this white splatter on his jacket and then on the tip of his boot. That tipped me off for, for some kind of reason to provide conflict to some degree. And so I was, I was having a lot of fun with this one. I was trying to keep it mostly like lighthearted. I was really using this as an exercise to discover the voice of this character. And if you read closely or listen closely, you'll see that I, I used a lot of actually his voice in the narrative. And I'm trying to get better at that because anytime you write something, a narrative description, whatever it is, it should be in the voice of the POV character. It doesn't have to be literally in the voice, as in he's saying it aloud or she's saying it aloud, but it needs to have the right feeling. 
And so I interjected more than a few times uh, to try to inject his voice in here. So things like, but he'd been the one in the damn truck and those brain pan, et cetera, et cetera. Also, when I talk about his name, because when they say, J when, when we see Jake on the breast patch, because what the fuck else would it say? Things like that really help add color and, and break up the narrative description. You might argue that he's a bit of a cliche character, but I think that's okay. He looks like he's a bit of a cliche and I... I think I could have gone the ironic route and, and flipped that on its head and maybe uh, created his voice to be different than how he appeared overtly, but I, I guess I went the easy route. I was looking to write something that had a lot of flow to it, and I think uh, choosing the, uh, the voice I did really helped in that regard. And one of my regrets is this massive paragraph right here. So I like it to a degree, right? Because it's, it's, it's super visual, right? It's very evocative. You can picture it in your head immediately when I, when I describe his look and especially his case, right? So I start off, I kind of mix up the description of, of what he looks like with the slick back hair and his mustache and stuff, along with a lot of the description of his room. So it was kind of broken up. However, this entire thing, this entire long ass paragraph was his case because it does have a lot of cool details on it. And I think that's somewhat okay, right? Because he's looking at himself, right? He's He's looking at himself that showed him, or he's looking at a mirror that showed him a man who looked damn good. But then also the case that could have housed a violin or an assault rifle, et cetera, et cetera. And I, and I figured that each one of these elements d deserves some kind of explanation. Uh, the blue dot thing uh, came out of nowhere. And that's, I think, another regret. I wish I would have brought that back. I don't know if it would have been the old lady referring to him as looking blue or something else, but I think that would have been a nice tie-in. All I really tied together uh, with the story, or the only thing that was tying the story together, essentially, was the bird, right? And, and so that's a bit what I was trying to create here. I was trying to create him. He looks like a hitman, an assassin of some kind, and he's going out. And he's listening to the door and he's 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 reminding us or reminding himself that they're always looking for him and then of course right when he steps out he hears a watch out and he thinks he's done right he thinks that he's been shot he's in shock and that's why he doesn't feel any pain but little does he know is it's bird shit but then what happens after that well he realizes it's not a fake bird right if you guys have ever seen blade runner you'll know that uh, real animals are, are pretty rare all the animals or most of the animals there are synthetic. And so I kind of use that as inspiration a little bit here when I talked about how it's, a, it's an old world bird or old world pigeon. And so he knows it's expensive. And that basically tipped him off that it's a uh, messenger pigeon, a carrier pigeon, whatever you want to call it. And I wanted to tie a little humanity in here, right? Tough guy walks the old lady across the road, essentially, uh, to show that he's, he's, he's a little bit softer on the inside to a degree. And so what did I do? I have the old woman uh, reminiscing about feeding these, these pigeons when she was a young girl because she is very old. But then her eyes glittered. I think I could have been clear here. This, what I was trying to get across here was that she, you know, she has cybernetic implants, essentially because immediately after she says it's crossing six and fourth, but then before she uh, lets him go, she, she begs him, Jake, before you kill it, will you give it this? And she hands out a little cracker. And then finally I end it with the, uh, the image we see of him doing this to the camera. And he says, you got it, lady. So I think overall, uh, it was a fun story. I think there could have been more conflict. There could have been a little more foreshadowing. I did have the bird in there uh, that took us all the way to his, uh, the white splat that's on his shirt, that's on his shoes. I tied that in with a little bit of a, a lighthearted encounter with an old lady, but then also hopefully turned that to a degree because she spotted this bird for him because he, he thought he was in trouble. Um, they're gonna, the bird's gonna report the coordinates and. And they're going to send somebody out to get him. But this old lady, she helps him. I think that's another regret I had is, is maybe he could have helped the old lady. That would have been more interesting. And then uh, she repays him back by, by giving the coordinates of the bird. But I was getting to the word count very quickly because of that bloated paragraph of the description of his case and himself. So I don't know. I don't completely hate the story or anything. I think it's sort of lopsided. It's, it's a little bit too asymmetrical. Not that every story should be symmetrical, but... I think uh, the turn happened far too late for my tastes, but that's okay. These aren't all winners. These all aren't all perfect. I think if anything, I created uh, an interesting character. I, it was an excuse to write in the voice of, of someone else, someone very distinct. And I think that's always good practice. So I encourage you, if you feel if your writing is, is sounding too much like you and not like the character, maybe try to take it to a more extreme degree like I did here. Try to create a character with a very distinct, a very strong voice. And I think that will help you create some narrative depth with your writing. 
This is very easy to do in first person, and I think that that is also a quicker way to go about it. For some reason, third person tends to make people stray into the omniscient a little bit too often. So if you're not in first person and you want to write in third person, you might want to try to write it in first person and then just switch out the eyes to the pronoun or names of your choice. But that is it for the story. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Hopefully maybe it inspired you to uh, tackle a little character sketch of your own because they're, they're pretty fun as you can see, especially when you exaggerate them. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for watching and keep reading, keep writing, and I will see you next week. Thanks, bye. If you'd like to read the story in its non-video format, check the link in the description. I didn't edit anything else, promise. Thanks again.